Hello world, my name is Kevin McAleer and I will be reading you an excerpt from my brand new novel, Berlin Tango, and I'm reading it from the uh, premises of the publishing house Palm Art Press here in Berlin, uh, which has published the book, as you can see. <laughs> That evening, I hopped my bike and pedaled to my tango school for a lesson. When I got there, three or four couples were on the dance floor in preparation for the intermediate one class. My partner hadn't yet arrived, so I went to the bar in the school's second room and got a glass of white wine and came back to watch the couples drilling their ganchos and cicadas and baleos. It was a real problem finding partners in Berlin. People said there was this big surplus of women in the tango scene, but that wasn't true. Leastwise, not at my school, where I often had to dance with men. And not because there weren't enough women, but since the women wanted to dance with each other. I felt there should have been some kind of rule against this. You always had one or two couples who were she on her by choice, and most of them didn't seem lesbian. Added to this was that a woman could only progress as fast as the man who led her. So you had neophyte women dancing with intermediate or even advanced men, but never the reverse since the women just grew impatient and moved on to other partners. I'd been through five or six already, or they through me. I looked around the room. Tonight there were a lot of shabraks. A shabrak was literally a saddle blanket, old and worn, and the shabraks were women no longer young who, for this reason, weren't asked to dance all that much. At Malangas, they would sit out a danceless evening, nursing a wine or two or three, legs stylishly crossed, their chins proudly raised, and then around 2 a.m., somewhat resignedly, though with consummate dignity, they slipped out of their dance shoes and reached under their chairs for their pumps and put them on and stood up and walked crisply toward the exit with their heads held high as if to say, well, gentlemen, you've had your chance. When I first started attending Malangas, I didn't dance at all because I felt so unbelievably dashing in my all-black tango outfit that I wasn't prepared to spoil the mysterious stranger illusion, that of a dangerous man with secrets. My only secret being that I couldn't tango to save my life. But soon I was asking the Shabraks to dance. It was similar to an older and more experienced woman bringing a younger man along sexually. You were willing young flesh, and they had the know-how and sophistication and were so very grateful. That cliché, but true. I found them not only grateful and gracious, but sexy in the way they gave themselves to you on the dance floor and they were superlative dancers, which was another thing about tango. It was one of the few physical activities where you actually got better with age. Some of the best dancers out there were men and women in their 60s, just absolutely owning the thing, because it wasn't about fancy footwork, but suffering and failure, as I said. So in 60 some years, you were bound to have experienced your share of each and have, have developed your own tango philosophy. Though everyone had their own tango philosophy, it seemed. Or more precisely, their not tango philosophy. That's not tango. You heard this phrase a lot. Like Robert's flannel dancers. For him, they were diametric to tango because in tango, you were the guapo. The word translates as handsome, but in tango terms, it connotes a young blade at least in Robert's approach. My introductory lessons with him, he was always calling me to move forward stealthily like a big cat, and like you had a dagger in your hand and were entering a knife fight. A cat with a dagger? No matter. Do Mr. Guapo! And on the dance floor, you had to keep your head up and be wary of the other guapos who wanted to slice out your guts and cut into your action. His point, keeping with the blade metaphor, was that you couldn't afford to be dull, since your job wasn't to put a woman at ease, but make her look sharp by imposing a clean, aesthetic form on her female amorphousness, as Robert once put it. Then you took her home and had sex and stabbed her to death with that knife of yours. 
Robert never said that. But there was a palpable aura of malice in tango. Not only the pushing back and forth, but the dancers never looked at each other. A woman's forehead tilted hard against your temple or cheekbone. And this tango head position was precisely the problem when my partner finally arrived. Her name was Evelyn. She was a big blonde with a nice firmness to her, including her hair, which wasn't so nice since it stuck out from her head in these Shirley Temple curls and kept getting in my eyes. I also had a lousy habit of raising my elbow and pushing the woman's hand back so that it was even with her ear, like I was throwing a left hook. And it was even more pronounced now while being blinded by Evelyn's intractable tresses. Steve, relax, said Manuela, one of the teachers that evening. You're much too intense. I said, but I need to shield my partner from the killer guapos. What? said Manuela. I gave her a tongue-in-cheek explanation. You need do nothing of the sort, she said. A woman wants to feel comfortable out on the dance floor, not like there's some kind of impending mortal danger. Tangle is walking, a companionable stroll, nothing more, nothing less. Manuela was about 40, with soulful gray eyes and a hard-working posterior that you couldn't help but ogle whenever she danced, by trying to ignore a jaguar prowling the floor. Grrr, a true big cat. Now I expounded Robert's theory of tango as sublimated sexuality. Of course it's about eroticism, said Manuela, but the eroticism is innate to the situation. A man and woman pressed close together and dancing to the seductive music. You don't need to sex it all up with some hyper-masculine approach. You don't need to manhandle your partner. I said, I'm just trying to give her clear signals. The woman wants to be led, said Manuela, not overwhelmed. Don't even think of it as leading. When you initiate a move, just see it as inviting her. Don't fret, just walk, walk. One of the simplest dances there is. For the rest of the lesson, she had me do remedial work, placing my hands on Evelyn's chest, the heels of my palms resting on the tops of her sizable breasts. The idea was to give me the proper feeling of tango, not jerking her around with my arms, but applying subtle pressure so as to invite her response. I was glad to have Evelyn's sausage curls out of my face, though it was a bit embarrassing pushing her boobs around the floor for the remainder of the lesson, and I don't think Evelyn herself was too thrilled, especially since this was the first time we'd ever danced together. But I suppose it advanced my technique.